Hello and welcome everybody to a new episode of Numika's Lifehack. This is Patrick from the office in Germany and today we will hopefully finish what we started the last time. That is we design a radial compressor with the agile engineering design system developed by Concepts NRC, which will also be implemented into our new Omnis environment within yeah, the near uh, future. So for those of you who haven't seen the previous life hack, I uh, invite you to take a look at it. What we basically did, uh, <clears throat> what we basically did was we started off in Compile, which is uh, the mainline design tool for centrifugal compressors. We entered our operating point, that is pressure ratio, mass flow, RPM, stuff like that. And then Compile basically returns um, a rough estimate of the stage, inlet uh, radius ratios, exit diameter, stuff like that. And now we will send this design to Accent. Accent is a 3D um, geometry generation tool, but also an analysis tool. It contains different solvers to calculate the flow. Um, you have the possibility to conduct FEA simulations. So there are really a lot of options that you have over there. And um, yeah, I suggest we just get started by sending this design right here to to compile, uh, to accent by saying agile start accent. So what compile basically did was it transferred all the key parameters such as blade count, uh, impeller diameter, stuff like that. It transferred all these um, parameters to Accent and Accent tries to fill the gaps in order to create a first uh, estimate of the three-dimensional shape um, of your stage. And um, as soon as we enter Accent, what you get is this layout right here, which provides you with an azimuthal view in ZR coordinates of the stage. You get a 3D view, which shows you also the volume. Uh, you have the thickness of the impeller blades and the beta distribution. And now you can dive into the more detailed design and analysis of your radial compressor. And before we get started, I would just like to show you a few tricks which might make your life more easier down the road. So um, the first thing I usually like to do is when I enter Accent, I go to Setup Stored Designs. And the, here you can save different um, designs of your stage. So let me let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to just say add current and I'm going to call this version one. And I'm going to make a little note saying import from uh, compile. And I'm going to say OK. So now this design is saved and I can change something like it's, uh, I'm going to go to the beta distribution and change something right like here. And now, for instance, if I somehow notice that I uh, screwed up, then I can just go to setup, store designs, click on this design and say revert to and then I'm back where I started. So you do not have to uh, save different accent versions, save as. You can do that, of course, but um, this is more efficient and you can make notes to any changes you applied and you can revert back to any uh, states that you have um, saved. Now we start with this view right here and there are a few map keys which allow you to navigate um, to the different parts of the stage more easily. So if you enter this view, for instance, you can press one, which is gonna draw attention to the inflow of the stage. Two is the impeller. Three is the first part of the 
diffuser, which um, consists basically of the pinch. Four is the rest of the diffuser and uh, V is the volute. So this is pretty nice because you can use these shortcuts to navigate really quickly from one part of the stage to the next. If you somehow messed up your view and you would like to go back to the default settings of your view, you just press space, which brings you to the default view. That's um, just a few shortcuts, which I uh, really like. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to focus on the impeller here in any view or in most of the views, if you want to change something you have to or you can uh, distinguish between hub and shroud. So for instance, right here, if I would like to change the shroud, I can just press S. And now I'm going to get these points which control the Bezier curves uh, for the shroud. And then you can just change it uh, by just by pressing S. And then, oops, uh, go back to the impeller. If you want to change the hub, you just uh, go back to um, to the hub by pressing H. And now you can change uh, the curves of the hub. So this, of course, doesn't make really sense uh, the design that I'm do right here. I just want to show you how you can quickly navigate to uh, the different parts of the stage and how you can change uh, really quick. So since I obviously screwed this design up, I'm going to go to setup, store designs, revert to confirm and close. And now I can go to the original layout by simply clicking here, screen one. And now I'm back to where I started. So let's dive in into a more detailed analysis. What I would like to do now is to activate uh, the Streamline Curvature Solver, which allows me to get a first impression of the flow field very quickly. And you can do that by simply clicking here in this view and say MST. Then you just have to select from where to where the calculation um, should be conducted. And I'm going to also activate MST always, which means that every time I change anything, for instance, the blade angle, then I also get directly an update uh, of my flow field. So I'm going to press OK, and then you can see this convergency plot. As you can see, it's very fast. It only takes a few iterations. And then you can right click here and select via flow and then for instance static pressure um, the flow property that you want to want to see and by pressing x you get a contour plot of this and now as soon as you change anything so for instance i'm going to enter the beta distribution down here i'm going to press s to edit the shroud and as soon as I change something here, you also get an immediate update here in your flow field. So this is actually really nice because the update is basically instantaneously because it really takes about only one or two seconds uh, to see uh, what has changed in your flow field. So let's focus a little bit more in detail on the blade angle distribution because this is quite an important topic. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to switch to a different uh, predefined layout, which brings me up a few more windows, allowing me to directly change the beta distribution. I can take a look at the incidence angle of the flow. Uh, I can adjust my exit lean angle and very important, I can see my blade to blade loading. So the blade to blade loading is defined as the difference between uh, the velocities at uh, pressure and suction side divided by an averaged velocity. So if your blade loading is too high, you are running the risk that um, the flow might stall in your compressor. However, if it's too low, and you um, have 
maybe a little bit too high of passage losses. So you have to find a middle ground here and uh, you can change the beta distribution. Let's, I'm going to do this right here and immediately see how it changes your blade loading. And what your objective usually should be is that your blade loading is relatively low at the beginning of the blade, reaches a maximum somewhere between 30, 40, 50 percent of the meridional coordinate, and then decreases again toward the trailing edge, as you can see it already does very nicely here for the hub. So the way of doing or to uh, modifying the blade to blade um, loading is by changing the, the angles. You can also change the contour of the casing right here, but I'm going to stick to the blade angles. But now instead of changing the beta distribution here, you also have the possibility to directly um, enter the incidence angle that you want. So the incidence angle is, as you can see, is down here. And you can simply go to uh, geometry, blade angles, adjust incidence angle. And what you usually want is at the design point, a low value of incidence. So one, two degrees. Some people also prefer a slight negative incidence angle. So I'm going to just enter, uh, let's say minus one at the hop and let's say zero at the shroud, apply. And then you will see that it also uh, changes your beta distribution in the same manner. So now I just press OK here. And now I have modified my incidence angle. Now, as you can see, the blade loading is still not perfectly uh, balanced. So you can play around with the beta distribution right here. You can go like that and maybe change it here toward the trailing edge. Yeah. So still not perfect. I'm going to leave it up to you to play around with that. I'm just uh, trying to yeah, give you the basic idea what you what you can do. So if at some point you are satisfied with your beta distribution, um, I'm going to switch to the standard layout again. And I would like to show you one more feature which I find quite nice, uh, quite nicely and that's uh, the overview function. So I have my 3D view right here and I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to save the design I have right now. I'm going to call this version two and say modified beta distribution. I'm going to say OK. And now I would simply like to compare the original design, which I imported from Compile and uh, compare it with the design I have right here. So I'm going to go to view overlay method. And what I usually do is I select multiple overlays. And then I can say overlays, uh, show overlays, store design. I'm going to select version one, which is the design I uh, imported at the beginning. Let's say here the MST and add, yeah, either the current design or you can select a specific version. I'm going to also say, so these are basically just the MST uh, parameters, um, which we already selected at the beginning. Now I can say, okay. Then it takes a few seconds and then you get basically all the changes or you can see all the changes that you uh, applied. So as you can see, there's still pretty much to do the trailing and the leading oh, here um, in specifically the leading edge still could use, uh, yeah, <laughs> could use some love. You can do that by simply going to geometry um, I think it's set up. Let me just take, yeah, set up and leading trailing edge uh, ellipse ratio. I'm going to do this real quick here. You can just say rounded uh, elliptical ratio of three. 
Same applies to the splitter blade. Say apply. And then you can see that also your um, uh, leading edge has been modified. And you can deactivate this by simply going back to overlays, turn off the over, uh, overlay, say OK, and then you get your current uh, design only. So this is pretty much all I wanted to show. As you may have gathered, um, there is a lot more if you want to get into specific details, just send us an email. We are also very happy to provide you with a, dem uh, with a demo anytime. You can visit our homepage or also go to conceptsnrec.com and take a look there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for today. I like to, yeah, like to wish you all the best and uh, see you the next time.